Well, there is a rare opportunity to see five planets lined up tonight. That's as long as the sky is clear. So for more on this cosmic conga line, we're joined live by CTV science and tech expert Dan Riskin. Dan, this sounds pretty uh, A, rare, but B, like a unique opportunity to check this out. So what exactly should we be looking for? And if we see it, what are we seeing? Yeah, this is a, it's a low hanging fruit in terms of the celestial bodies. It's really easy to see the planets right now. Right after the sun goes down, you can see two planets very close to the horizon, right where the sun just set. But you can't take too long because they're setting too. So mm. but half an hour to 45 minutes after the sun goes down, you can find Jupiter and you can find Mercury very close to the horizon. Mercury's a treat. That's one that's not very easy to see very often, but Jupiter's quite bright and should help you get oriented quite quickly. Then as you scan up the sky, the brightest uh, thing that looks like a star that you're gonna see in the sky is Venus. That should be very easy to see. Right next to Venus is Uranus, which is, as you know, it's hard to see Uranus uh, most of the mm -hmm. time, but if you have binoculars, uh, you might be able to see that. You might wait till a little bit darker part of the night to see that one. And then scanning a little bit farther back, uh, you'll see the moon. And next to the moon, you'll see this red dot, and that's Mars. So that's Jupiter, Mercury, Venus, Uranus, and Mars all in the sky at the same time. And on top of that, there's a great pass of the International Space Station that's going to happen tonight as visible from Toronto. So it's really a good night to get out there and just look at the heavens. Yeah, it sounds remarkable, right? And, and I understand it's incredibly rare. You talked about sort of binoculars or telescopes. What would you be able to, if you don't have that, what would you be able to see with the naked eye, Dan? With the naked eye, you're going to see four of the five, no problem. That's going to be very easy to do. So Mercury and Jupiter close to the horizon right after the sun goes down. Uh, Jupiter is often in the sky and, and is quite easy to, to spot. Now, if you do have binoculars or a telescope, you can sometimes see the moons of Jupiter. It sounds like you would need a big fancy planetarium to do that, but you really can do it with binoculars. It's quite amazing. And then Venus is a really bright one. That one often gets mistaken for a UFO. There are lots of reports to the U.S. government and the Canadian government saying, I've got a UFO in the sky. It's usually Venus. So if you see a UFO, it's probably Venus. And, and Uranus is next to Venus. It's very close, but it's quite dim and quite far away. And so it's quite hard to see. And then Mars, you know, and you can see it. It's red in color and it's going to be close to the moon. So it's almost like everything's lined up to make it easier to see it tonight. And, uh, and so people really have no excuse. you got to go outside and just take a look at the sky. Yeah. It, it fills you with wonder every time. So, so what does this mean? What does it signify? Is it, is it say anything about what's happening celestially? Well, I mean, there are lots of people for centuries who have said that this means that you should probably ask out that person you have a crush on or something like that. And, you know, astrology and astronomy were intertwined for, for centuries and people really didn't see the difference between them. But if you ever want to get an astronomer really mad, call them an astrologer and see what yeah. happens because they're very separate disciplines. And so astronomically, what's really happening is, you know, those planets are always lined up. It's just that a lot of the time they're on the side of the Earth where the sun is, so you can't see them. And so really it's a matter of those planets being on the dark side of the sky. So, you know, you can picture that we're in this plane with all these planets going around in a big circle. So you can only see the ones that are on the other side from the sun. If they happen to be on the same side as the sun, it's too bright during the day. You can't see them. And so this is really all about where they are relative to us. And if you stop and just sit down and look at the stars, and try to get your head around where we are in the solar system. It gives you a little bit of sympathy for people hundreds of years ago right. who thought you know, that the turtles are pulling them through the sky or a chariot pulling them through the sky and that we're the center of the universe because it's very counterintuitive the way things really are moving up there. Yeah, it really makes you feel like you're part of something so much, much, much bigger, Dan. Uh, in the meantime, you talked about the brightness of, you know, depending on which side of the sun it's on. Will we be able to see it sort of in downtown Toronto or do we need to get away from the sort of light pollution? It might be hard to see Uranus in downtown Toronto, but I just like saying things like that. Me but too. if you look for Jupiter or if you look for Venus or if you look for Mars, those are ones you can see from Toronto, no problem. And listen, I got to say, at 9.33 tonight, if you set an alarm on your phone for 9.33, it'll, there will be a passing of the International Space Station through mm. the sky. It'll go from 9.33 to 9.36 as visible in the GTA. And so... This is an opportunity if you've got your alarm set at exactly 9.33 tonight, you go outside, you look up, and you will see this white dot moving across the sky, and that is the International Space Station with people on board floating over the Earth. And the ISS they've just announced is probably going to be taken out of the sky yeah. uh, in 2031. And so now that we know this thing has a finite existence and we can't take it for granted, you might as well get out there and see that too. So right after sunset, that's when you can see some of those planets best. But if you wait till 9.33, that's when you're going to see the International Space Station fly overhead. It's just a great night for the skies in Toronto. All right, Dan Riskin, thanks for teeing this all up for us. Really appreciate it. Always good to chat with you. CTV science and tech expert. We'll talk soon, Dan, I'm sure. Take care. Take care. Thanks a lot. All right.